this talk. So, so we're on the last talk of the day. Thank you all for being here. How uh, how's everyone's DEF CON going? Mine too. It's been great. Uh, and we haven't had any hiccups yet, so don't mess it up, guys. All right. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, okay. It's so a live demo, Mike. Well, <laughs> did you make an offering to the demo gods? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. 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 All right, let's get started. So our next speakers here, they're no strangers to the Cloud Village. We've got Noam Dahan and Egal Goffman. Noam is a senior security researcher at Hermetic and has previously spoken at Black Hat, DEF CON, and I think most recently at Ford CloudSec, yeah? That's a, that's a fun little spot over there. And Egal Goffman is head of security research at Hermetic and has also spoken at various conferences, including Black Hat and DEF CON. So this talk, they're going to introduce uh, Assault uh, CNAP Goat. It's a CLI tool designed to deploy inten intentionally vulnerable by design cloud infrastructure, providing a useful playground for def <coughs> defenders to test their protective strategies and for offensive professionals to refine their skills. Please give a warm welcome to Norman. Hello, everyone. Uh, so we're here for CNAP Goat, and uh, Mike just had to deal with the my mouthful, but I'll read it again. It's an open source tool to deploy multi-cloud, vulnerable by design cloud components. <laughs> Basically, you have a lot of bad stuff that you want to monitor for, uh, uh, prevent, remediate, alert, detect. So you need a way to provision that so that you know where your posture is. Uh, who are we, very shortly? Uh, so yeah, we've just been introduced, so I think we can skip ahead. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, I forgot that this doesn't do what I wanted to do. Okay, so CNAP Go is, uh, so CNAP Go is open source, or we wouldn't be here. It's modular, provisions vulnerable by design uh, cloud components, and what it does differently than a lot of really great projects out there, which we wholeheartedly support, have a little feedback. Back, actually. All right. Uh, then a lot of other pro projects which we wholeheartedly support, like uh, CloudGo, CubeGo, CloudFoxable, uh, Stratus Red Team, is that we have gone uh, with very atomic scenarios. So we're looking for the modules to be able to test the like, kind of security primitives of CNAP. I'm just going to be talking about what like CNAP is in a second. And also uh, more uh, posture-based than events-based. So there are other tooling out there, uh, Derf presented uh, here by Cat, uh, Stratus, which are really good for events-based detection, but a lot of what people do in cloud security is actually look for posture, actually look for something like a public bucket being created or more uh, complicated uh, setups. So to set up, all you need is an account with your cloud provider of choice. We do recommend a separate sandbox because as it says in the title, you're going to be provisioning vulnerable components. We've tried to walk the tightrope of making them vulnerable enough to be detected, but not so vulnerable that you immediately get pwned. Uh, but still, you know, tread, with, tread lightly. These are vulnerable components, uh, so put them in a separate sandbox and it's an easy install. What, what, what are we expecting people to use them for? So security professionals can use them to test their teams, procedures, protocols. So let's say you uh, installed uh, or, or set up a security plan. Like we're not going to be talking about anybody that charges money. So you set up Cloud Custodian, right? It's an open source framework or you set up AWS Config or you set up Azure or Microsoft Defender. And now it says everything's clean. But what you don't know is what if something wasn't clean? What it, it, is, are the things being detected? So you can set up the sort of things you're worried about out of the uh, very expansive list of things that, well, as security professionals, we should be worried about and see that they're indeed detected. Uh, instructors can use them to create hands-on workshops. Uh, that's actually one of our primary internal use cases. Uh, as some of you may know, AWS have a pretty great tool for it, but they keep it completely internal. Uh, so uh, uh, everybody needs to set up their own. If you're someone doing instructions, educations, trainings for your team, for your customers, for your partners, for whoever, and pen testers can provision a shooting range to test their skills and also their tooling, right? If I set up something that's supposed to hack, a container with log for shell, I need to be able to set up and tear down quickly an exposed container with log for shell. Uh, so the modules. Modules are the categories of risks that we are working with. So CIM, 
So all of these fall under the broad defini definition of CNAP, which for those of you who are fortunately out of the Gartner sphere, I will explain briefly. CNAP is Cloud Native Application Protection Platform, and all it means is basically what all the cloud security tooling uh, 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 does. Uh, so. And, and, and that divides into a couple of primary categories. The, one we're, the ones we're supporting at launch, because we just launched uh, a week and a half ago, are CIM or KEEM, which is uh, identities and entitlements, CWPP, workload protection. That's all of your workloads, vulnerabilities, out of date operating systems, vulnerable containers, and CSPM, those are all your post security posture risks. Your exposed buckets, your misconfigured cloud trails, all of those. Uh, we will also look to support the other components that make up or don't make up the uh, CNAP, like infrastructure as code or Kubernetes security, but there the challenge is kind of how to incorporate it without redoing the work of some really great existing projects like Terago and Kubego, uh, while still providing this easy CLI. You don't need to be a DevOps, you don't need to know Terraform or Pulumi uh, uh, to build it, you only need to know how to run a CLI command. So CNAP Goat is built with Pulumi. Uh, Pulumi is an open source infrastructure as code tool, which was, as of a week ago was a non-unique statement. Uh, and you build by writing code in whatever programming language you prefer. So that's Go, Node.js, Python, any .NET language, any like Node.js in the tree language, Java, Java YAML. And, uh, and uh, basically the way the tool works is that we have the CNAP Goat engine with its own state management and with its own like uh, things taking care of you. That goes to the Pulumi Automation API and that goes to the Pulumi CLI core. So what are we gonna do today? We're gonna check out some scenarios. We're gonna look at the list of scenarios and what's on the docket, what's available. We're gonna see a description of one scenario with the describe command. We're gonna provision and destroy a scenario. Then we're gonna provision a whole bunch of them and, and see whether they're being detected by the native detections in AWS in this case. Uh, otherwise, we can like chat about a whole bunch of things and we will have time for questions. And before we move on to the exciting part of the live demo, does anybody have a question up until now? Okay, so hopefully we're clear enough and uh, now we, we move into the, you know, the dark mode screen and everybody's a little, a little more excited, hopefully. <laughs> so first thing we do with any CLI tool is type in help, right? So we type CNAP go help and we see the commands down there. We have uh, clean, describe, destroy, list, provision. All these should be self-explanatory. They either tell you about commands or they tear them up and build them up and tear them down. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is demonstrate a lambda with public secrets. So lambdas, you all know, serverless functions, and oftentimes they need to access things which aren't like cloud native. Like they are not accessing a DynamoDB, they're accessing like an Elasticsearch cluster that you have to access network-wise. So the devs need to put creds on there. Now the AWS like documentation correct recommended way to do it is you give the lambda a role, right? And the role has secrets manager permissions. And in secrets manager, you store the secret for the credentials, and then you use the credentials to access. But that sounds hard. And developers want to be happy. So oftentimes, they put the credentials in the environment variables. That way, they're not hard coded, which we know is bad. Uh, but they're just hard coded in metadata, which is quite readily accessible to some very, very low permission users in your org, and sometimes publicly, right? Because they want to expose the Lambda for invocations. It's like, what's the harm in this exposing describe? You know, what's the harm in exposing a get? Uh, so here you have a description. That's basically what I told you right now. Uh, and now we're going to set it up. Uh, so all we did was uh, type in, uh, where is it? Uh, Yep, CNAP Go provision. Uh, and what you're seeing for the output there, if we scroll down, is just the Pulumi output for it. I will warn that uh, uh, Pulumi, and this is a feature, uh, loads plugins ad hoc. So the first time you run it, if your internet connection is not that great, like in some of our homes, uh, then it's gonna take a little while because it's downloading a whole nother plugin. Now that it's set up, uh, we just typed in AWS Lambda list functions, just the AWS command, not the CNAP Go command, right? And we see the secret right here. 
And like this is like very banal secret one and secret two, but in real life it's going to be like your Elasticsearch creds uh, for, for maybe your production cluster. So it's an important thing to flow to detection for. And it's a good way to see, is this something that the people watching Security Hub or watching the security product that I'm buying even paying attention to? Is it something I'm getting an alert from, from like Azure Defender or whatever I'm using or my organizational policy? I'm actually preventing it, so yeah. So the next thing we're going to do is just list the scenarios with the module flag. So the module is CWPP, that's workload protection. And what do we see here? All the vulnerable stuff and all the malicious stuff and some end of life. And what we're going to do is provision, uh, is essentially push to ECR a uh, vulnerable, uh, oh, we're going to provision a bunch of scenarios. So. First thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to provision an EC2 with IMDS v1 enabled. This is not an IMDS lecture, but IMDS is essentially uh, how uh, instances, and not only instances, get their cloud credentials actually into the SDK and working in the code. And all you need to know for this part is that v1 is bad and insecure and got some got a bank breached, uh, and, and v2 is more secure, uh, significantly. We're also provisioning a public bucket with secrets, ooh, and we're provisioning a vulnerable container of Redis uh, uh, to ECR. So in this point, if you're asking yourself what's more exposure, for this scenario, we're only pushing it to ECR. Still a bad idea to have a vulnerable container in your ECR, because someone might use it, but you know, it's just on ECR, it's not deployed uh, to the world. And now it's asking us, because it's a whole bunch of scenarios, we have a little prompt here, and it's going to uh, provision them. So where would we expect to, to, see, uh, to see the findings for those things? And for that, if anybody has a question, feel free to like. Okay. Good question. Yeah. Can you, does the configuration support putting like access control with like IP? Does Synap go, do you have a like, command line switch to put your own IP? So right now, the oh yeah, the, the the question. Thanks. The question is whether we have a control to put your own IP to plug it in. Right now, the way to do that is to edit the scenario and put it in. Uh, uh, we, it's a good idea to build that in as a configuration to the scenario because what we've done essentially is that in the configuration uh, uh, files. You, c you can edit the configuration files and CNAP go tunnels that through the Pulumi Automation API into Pulumi itself and then that gets set up as a configuration in the scenario. So if someone else doesn't write that pull request, I may write it. Uh, but right now, if you wanted to do this tomorrow, uh, your scenarios are entirely accessible to you. They're under home.cnapgoat and you can just edit them. They're just vanilla Pulumi. Uh, uh, you can just uh, uh, use them however you want. Yep, that's just Pulumi. We like Pulumi, it's pretty convenient. If you think you know Terraform and don't know Pulumi, it's not a hard switch. Uh, also, like, uh, you know, some, some AI tooling is decent enough with building Pulumi if you're really careful about updating all the versioning from 2021. Uh, so, now we have all of them deployed. So, where do we expect to see all of this? So, for uh, our Redis, we go to ECR and we see that the repo has indeed been provisioned and we go on it and we look at it and we scroll down to see findings. Let's see if we have some findings. And we have some findings. Uh, so, so this is like good news on the technical sense. You are using, in this case, we're using, right, paying for Inspector 2. They told us they were able to find vulnerable containers. We pushed a vulnerable container, they were able to find it. Of course, if you're doing a test for a team, that's part one. Part two is, did anyone care? Did we respond to this? Was this like flagged as a false positive or, or anything like that? Uh, the next thing is the bucket. And indeed, we can see the bucket is public. Uh, that's also an access analyzer finding. You can see it there. You can see it in Security Hub. Though the like, you know, gerbils pushing stuff from the front part back into Security Hub sometimes run a little slow. So for the demo, we'll stick to, to seeing that it's actually a public bucket. And for IMDS v1, I think we would see that in config. But uh, there we would really experience, you know, the, the config experience of this is an empty account, and if I set, like took you to the config screen right now, it would have like 35 findings and the one we just set up would only be one of them. Uh, and now we just destroy everything. 
in case anyone in the audience got some you know fun ideas uh, uh, we destroy it and uh, and everything uh, does get immediately deleted by Pulumi. Pulumi does save the state files unless you use the clean command so when you set them up again they'll have the same names, the same postfixes, like to the best of Pulumi's capability, right? An EC2 instance is going to have a different name, but a bucket, they're good, uh, is, uh, so a bucket you can't build under the same name, whatever you can build under the same name will build under the same name. And, uh, and uh, once it gets destroyed, with that uh, concludes the demo element, and we can chat about how to add scenarios and how to, and, and where the roadmap takes us. Uh, but as you can see, it's all pretty easy. It's all accessible to people in the team who don't have to know Pulumi, who don't have to know Terraform. Uh, the one person leading the charge here should probably read the, the open source publicly available scenarios and the descriptions and understand exactly what's being deployed. But to use it actually is a very simple streamlined process. And that's how we want to keep it, like pretty opinionated and, and something that you can deploy with simple CLI tooling. We are on two repos, right? We want to keep them separate. CNAP Goat is the engine repo, and this is the scenarios repository. Right now, everything that we written was in Go because we like Go, but the cross-platform support is out of the box here. So you can just write a scenario in your preferred language. Uh, like if, if you like .NET, you can just write one in .NET. Uh, you can write one in YAML. Uh, that's also a supported language. You don't really have to. Uh, do a programming language, uh, and uh, and if uh, you like it, uh, then there are contributing guidelines to, for how to like build the the project file the way we like it, the way the naming is consistent, the way the resources are tagged appropriately, and we'd love a pull request. We actually have one pull request from Aidan Steele, uh, and uh, and it should be merged uh, uh, soon enough. Right now, we are on 50 scenarios, uh, uh, but we're looking to be on 100 soon enough. Uh, we are on AWS and Azure, but by the time the DEF CON hangover wears off and for the two of us the 10 hour time, uh, time shift wears off, uh, then we will have GCP up. <laughs> the PRs are there, it's just the people approving them are in this room right now talking to you. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and after that, uh, sky's the limit, but mostly infrastructure is code, DSPM for data security and, and uh, like private information where it shouldn't be, and uh, <laughs> Kubernetes uh, uh, for that. Although for that, there's like a fun question of, so the CNAP goat way would be, let's set up a whole cluster, right? Because we're like, put us in an empty account, but let's set up a whole cluster is also not in line with the way we're trying to build really cheap stuff for you that at minimal cost triggers your detections or triggers your preventions and remediations. And uh, yeah. Any questions? Any questions? All right. Think about it. Have you, have you looked at uh, the virtualization of Kubernetes inside Kubernetes type, like where you can have basically a K3S Kubernetes cluster inside for that temporary? <clears throat> Let me try to repeat that. Have, I looked at the, have we looked at the virtualization of Kubernetes within Kubernetes where we can have a K3S uh, provisioned inside? No, we have not, uh, but we would love to learn. Uh, this is, uh, among other things, this is what we come here for, right? Last year at Cloud Village, uh, we got Google to st stop ignoring a bug report and reopen it, so <laughs> Cloud Village is a good place. Good things happen. All right, that's fine. Yes, in the back. There's about 50 scenarios. How many different services on AWS and uh, Azure are covered? How many services on AWS and Azure fall into these 50 scenarios? Not a lot. We kept really core focused. Like we have some niche -er services, like code build is in there, and uh, uh, but 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 we wanted to start from the core, and the core is going to be. EC2, Lambda, IAM, uh, uh, the security stack, and, uh, and, and the <laughs> container stack. Like, you know, there are famously 17 container stacks, but the main container stack. Uh, so right now, not a lot of, we focused on uh, scenario coverage over service coverage. 
We're also looking at uh, a compound modularity as a step in the, in the near-ish future, like being able to tie a few scenarios together, have an exposed machine with a secret on it that leads to another, that leads to an IAM user. Uh, but for now, we really wanted, like, I think by now you've understood our primary use cases. And for those use cases, the compound scenarios weren't priority one. And also in comparison to, again, some great stuff out there that does these capture the flags, uh, that does these uh, 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 hack the box uh, uh, riddles like, uh, like a flaws cloud or a hacking the cloud or, uh, or, uh, or uh, cloud go. Thanks. Yes. How did you guys come up with the list of, I guess, scenarios that were high priority? So, the framework right? so yes, yes and no. Uh, uh, essentially, oh, sorry. How did we come up with the list of scenarios? So, the the question forces me to mention that we work for a cloud security company, and so and so it it is a, a based on our internal assessments of findings to a certain extent. Uh, those findings are in alignment with, uh, you know. ISO, NIST, a whole bunch of frameworks. I'm not really the compliance guy, but, uh, but, but with a whole bunch of frameworks, it would be interesting to do what some other tooling uh, uh, does, which is stick standards uh, to each scenario. Uh, but uh, yeah, so, so it's some, somewhere in the roadmap. Uh, it, it's, it's also, I mean, I, I don't. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna funnel off the, the hard labor here. Anything that I say, we will eventually do. But it's also a very easy community contribution, if anybody wants to make it. But of course, we'll do it. We're not like <laughs> telling you to do it. It's just some people want green squares on their GitHub, and you know. Or faster. Sorry. Oh, or they want it faster. Or they want it faster. Yeah, definitely. We we yeah we're we're definitely. Open, open to that, and also for CNAP Go to like keep up with the time. So Aiden's PR for us was about the GitHub uh, subject uh, for OIDC. So if you connect with GitHub with OIDC, but you don't check the subject line in the IAM role, anybody can connect to your IAM role from their own GitHub Actions OIDC. So that's what he put in. So it's all about like keeping up with the research and whenever a new TTP gets launched, incorporating it straight into CNAP Go. Yes. Yes. How would I go about creating a compound scenario? Because for a red team engagement, you would need to chain a vulnerability to uh, credentials to something else. So as I said, we are personally not there yet. But the magic and beauty of open source is that you can go on CNAP Go scenarios and just like copy our Pulumi and use it for whatever. Right now, we're not solving this problem for you today. I'm going to be perfectly honest. But uh, that doesn't mean that a trip to the repo can't save a few working days of your life until we do it. So we'll get done, though. Cool, so if there are no further questions, thanks a lot, everyone. And start the repo, and uh, that's it's our time. Uh, we are at hermetic-research slash synapgoat for the repo, and synapgoat scenarios for the scenarios.